We finally got in a brand new deep dungeon for Endwalker and it is dubbed Eureka Orthos and this video is going to be a very light introductory guide to how to get started and get involved into it and kind of get your head on before the actual servers come up and then you're like, wait, how do I unlock this? I'm going to answer all of these questions, unlocks, basic mechanics, basic rules of it and then we're going to go and deep dive into it this following week. Likewise, there's going to be timestamps in the description as always and I hope that you get all the information you want, so let's get into it. I'm going to read the introductory text first, which is going to be Eureka Orthos is an ever-changing dungeon whose architecture is never quite the same each time the players enter the facility. All players are going to begin at level 81, and only by fighting the enemies within will they be able to gain the strength and experience needed to explore its depths. Players who choose to leave can return later from where they last saved. We challenge all who enter to make it to the last floor. So that's the official description, but what I'm going to say as someone who has done Palace of the Dead and Heaven on High quite a bit is that that description is a little vague. So you can queue either as a solo player or up to a recommended four player party to conquer this content. These are like how to say it, programmatically generated tile sets that can be in a whole bunch of different configurations. So every time you go in, it's going to be a different exploration for you. There's likewise going to be different effects that you're going to get, which we're going to cover at a different timestamp in this video. Uh, there's going to be roughly similar mobs on each floor like you know if you're on like floor 110 to like 120 of palace of the dead what to expect but the way they patrol the amount all of these different factors are totally up for grabs to change so what really a lot of people are looking for here is a lot of the items which we don't know the full list of yet and they are looking for like that solo title because we all know that if someone has the necromancer title that is one of the most like prestigious like oh my gosh this person is like super awesome like titles because it requires a ton of patience dedication like things like knowing if you can walk behind a mob without alerting it versus like if you can like literally walk in front of it because it's like not able to see you it like all of these different kind of factors matter in here and you kind of to solo it successfully till the end is a huge achievement and does require like all of these factors to be known then obviously if you make it to the end you get that amazing title and that is really i think above any single other reward like the number one thing that people are like oh my god i need this so in order to enter into eureka orthos you need to have completed all of endwalker and to have cleared floor 50 of Fal of the Dead. Then you talk to Ko Rabatna in Mordorama of X 21.8, Y of 8.1 to start the quest Delve into Myth. So if she has nothing to say to you, you probably didn't finish Endwalker or Palace of the Dead. To just floor 50. Just floor 50. You don't need to go to 200. In order to enter Eureka Orthos, you're going to be speaking with Katun in Mordorama of X of 34.8 and Y of 19.2. And then obviously if you're entering as a party, only the party leader can enter the instance. You can enter with a cross world party, which is going to be very convenient. Now let's talk about the leveling system for anyone who isn't like familiar with Palace of the Dead or have on high you're probably gonna be like wait I got like de leveled that's actually a normal process of this and so what you do is when you enter into a new instance of Eureka Orthos at like the first floors of it you're gonna be starting at level 81 regardless of what class you're on what level that is you are kind of just starting out in Eureka Orthos at that level and then as you're like grinding through the floors you're going to get more experience and then you're going to be leveling up to level 90 in the dungeon. Alongside leveling though there is an alternative power system that is insanely integral to your success of being able to like solo the floors to the end and so you're going to be given what is going to be called aether pool gear. You're going to get an aether pool arm which represents like weapon and aether pool armor which is going to be like kind of like health stats. The developers did note specifically just because I think some people might need to hear it but aether pool gear strength in each deep dungeon is specific to that deep dungeon it's just like you can't take like a pedology or whatever weapon from like palace of the dead and be like oh i can use it no it doesn't work that way you're starting totally clean slate with everyone else when this is launched and what the developers are doing is i think very wise here and they are saying floors up to 30 are related to the storyline of eureka ortho so if you just want to experience that and have like a more like chill experience you just do to floor 30 and then all the floors after are going to be created 
created as the developers described strictly for a challenge for them and you do need to also have it where you are not in like a match made party like you need to be a pre-made in like a party finder party or solo in order to go through like a further than 30. But in addition to just that you need to also complete the quest Rage Extinguished which I can only presume we are going to be getting more details about when we're actually doing the deep dungeon content. I, I don't really have context for it right now. But in addition to that, you also need to prove yourself and you need to start from floor 1 or floor 21 with a fixed party and clear up to floor 30 with the party KO count absolutely being zero. That save data with like one or more party knockouts cannot be used on floor 31 and higher. Which makes sense because it's like if, if you wipe like in Palace of the Dead on like floor 120 like you just start off from the start, well I guess floor 51 but I digress. Now it's not Charmander, but it is the Protomanders. <laughs> it's like Pomanders. I always have said that I'm so dumb. But players on occasion can get these Pomanders and these look, at least to me, like 99% the same as Palace of the Dead Pomanders. Like I can see that orange one that looks like strength, I can see like that blue with the like I, I think you call it hexagons because six sides, whatever, three hexagons on blue. I know that's the defensive buff. I see like alteration there. Like these look very similar witchings there. Yeah. They do disclaimer saying some pomanders offer different effects from the pomanders found in Palace of the Dead and Heaven on High, which yeah, there's a few symbols that I can already see are different. Like you see that gear thing on the bottom, that's different. Oh, or that purple like hourglass on the bottom right, that's different. And then just similar, you have a separate inventory for these pomanders and then you use them when you want their effect and you can stockpile them especially when soloing stockpiling and using them effectively and at the critical moment is very important the next unique mechanic is that they have demi clones and you can obtain tome stones from treasure coffers in there that can be used to generate these demi clones and these can be used by any party member and you can have up to three of these tome stones be held and then once you use them it makes like an avatar character that's like gonna follow and fight alongside you who generate like whoever generated it in the party or you if you're solo and so yeah it's kind of like a more advanced pomander in my mind just using it wisely just seeing red and green i'm assuming one's dps one's healer I can only presume and then there might be a tank one and then they're adding in another factor which is going to be dread beasts that you can gain the strength of dead beasts well they say may so it might be RNG chance but you may gain the strength of dread beasts that you leave in Eureka Orthos by defeating them. Again, this is adding into player timing of knowing when exactly you want to use the right tool for the right situation. I, I like seeing these systems layered on each other. Now in terms of rewards, we're looking at general things like we look at tombstones, but we're also looking at things like the Accursed Horde, which is going to be something that you search out. It's like a golden beam of line. If it's similar to Palace of the Dead, you stand on it, you open the chest, you get some loot. You can also open up those loot boxes for uh, like items. We don't know items yet you can also trade in your aether pool level for the aether pool weapons very similar to before which i think is always a great system help people catch up i have nothing but compliments for that and with that being said i think that that's about all that we know at this current point in time without me going into like extreme depth about the levels so you should be set up on knowing the prerequisites where to go and the rewards what kind of structures of like mechanics are in there yeah i think that that's done and done with that being said i hope that everyone has an excellent time this patch and i'm gonna catch you soon because i'm gonna be grinding those relic weapons like an absolute crazy man <laughs> take care everyone have an awesome patch day <laughs>